Hi everybody and welcome back to yet another episode on the channel. Today I thought we would cover the drive shaft, uh, gear shifters, linkages, we're gonna swap out some parts, uh, we're gonna swap out the bearing that's on the drive shaft, we're also gonna swap out this gearbox pillow as we call it in Sweden. I think it would call the gearbox mount anywhere else. So yeah, we're gonna look a little bit at that, cover the drive shaft, you know, some bits and pieces to the shifter, everything to, that is needed to get the power from the clutch to the rear wheels. All right, so let's get started with the drive shaft bearing. This is the new unit. I would recommend getting a unit with the pre-pressed bearing in here because getting that thing in there can be quite challenging. You, know, you try to whack on it and it's all rubbery on the back side here, so it's just gonna spring on you. Now I got this from AutoDoc. I will be putting a link in the description for this. Time will tell if it works really good, but uh, it looks okay. I can't see any problems with it. And you can clearly see here that it's completely shot. And what you want to be looking at is this play up and down. You don't want this play right here. As you can see by the new one, the rubber inside here is not worn out. So it's not going to flex as much. It's going to flex a little bit. Of course, that's what you want. That's why you have the bushing, because you want it to flex slightly. You don't want it to flex, you know, like this. And let me also show you the bottom side of this, because it is completely delaminated itself. And you can see the cracking in the rubber and it's just, it's just gone to sh right? It's, it's crap. So we need to get this removed. All right, so what is the main important thing when dealing with drive shafts? Well, it's that you gotta put it back exactly the way you took it apart. There are splines in here that connect this axle to this axle and you wanna make sure you get the splines in exactly the same. Now, on the old 740s, you had uh, a little mark, like an arrow or a painted yellow dot on each so that you could know, okay, that one matches up to that dot, that one matches up to that dot. But on this drive shaft, I can't find anything like that. I can't find an arrow, I can't find a dot, I can't find any kind of reference as to how to put this back. Anyway, what I like to do is I like to make a little mark on this axle and this axle right where we take it apart so that I know exactly how to put it back together again. All right, so we start by pulling the drive shaft out a little bit, and then we need to get this rubber boot onto this axle. Just pop it off like so. As you can see, the splines right here, now they're all equal, so you can put it in any way you want, and that is the problem, isn't it? And I like to put a little dot right behind the splines here. You don't want to make the dot on the splines, obviously. And then you make a dot up here. You can put it on the side here. Where it's not going to be a problem for anything. And now we can go ahead and pull them apart. Now, mind you, it was a while ago I tried to do this, and I'm not really sure how I got the results that I got, or if the results I got were even decent, but... I'm gonna give this a try now, and this is gonna be completely by trial and error. I have not read a manual or anything of how to do this, uh, but like always, let's just figure it out, right? And I think that, uh, you know, I wanna try to use the puller, but I can't, I can't pull on this, because it's just crap. So I'm just gonna start by trying to remove as much rubber as I can, so we can get down to some metal and try using the puller. All right, so let's just start by cutting this off. Now you wanna make sure you don't use your best knife for this. All right, that's that one taken off. Let's just continue on with this rubber, see how much we can get off here. I need to get this puller set up. What I've done here is I set up this three jaw or three claw, I don't know what you call these things, puller on here. I just made sure that, that it's sitting in the back side like that, and hopefully this will work. But yeah, let's just give this a go and see if this thing will come off.
Wow, that was uh, that was absolutely the correct way to do that. That came off pretty easy. And there we go. There's the bearing, and hopefully we can save this steel plate in here. Yeah, it's no problem. Just take a screwdriver from inside, pull it out. And I can just chuck this away. Now, the face on here looks pretty good. I don't think I need to do anything about it. Looks nice and clean. I'm just gonna use a dab of oil. So this will go on smoothly. And you wanna put it on this way, obviously, the same as we took the other one off. Place it on here and then you wanna either press it on would be you know the preferred method, but I don't have a press. Uh, so we're gonna have to beat it on there. And you wanna beat on the inner ring here of the, the ball bearing. You never wanna hit on the outside ring because then you'll destroy the ball bearings. So we need to find something that'll fit that's just slightly larger than this axle. All right, so it turns, it turns out I don't have anything that is big enough to fit in here. Uh, so we're just gonna have to do it the good old way by beating it down side by side in a cross pattern until we get it on there. Now you gotta be really careful when you're doing this so you don't start it off crooked. Now you're starting to hear the sound change. That means you're getting closer and closer to the bottoming this thing out, which is what you want. I'd say that's good. All right, so we got the last piece here. I'm gonna whack this on here. I'm gonna be using the same method. Just be very careful with this because it's quite thin. All right, so that's looking good. All right, so from the beginning, my plan was to change out these uh, universal joints right here uh, for new ones, because I thought, you know, 440,000 kilometers is quite a long way, uh, so they must be really worn without really checking them out first. But now that I got it off, you know, it, they kind of check out. It's, it doesn't have any play in it or anything. It's not binding. It feels good. And these are non-greasable joints. They don't have any grease points on them at all and the ones I got have grease points now grease points I think is good out of a service perspective because you know you can just push some new grease in there when they get start to get get old you know with these you can't but because you can grease them they have channels in here for the grease and that makes the U joint uh, weaker and you know, we might push some power on this one day, and uh, I figured why make this weaker when we don't have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run with this, uh, it's just because they can hold a little bit more power than these probably can. Like they, don't, they don't look beefier in any way, they actually look smaller. Uh, so let's just not get into that. And uh, maybe I can find some... Uh, Maybe I can find some performance U-joints if that poses a problem. Now, I have never heard of anyone having problems with the joints. I've heard of people twisting the axle shaft, but I have never heard of anyone breaking the, the joints. So we're just gonna keep these on here for now and see what happens, basically. Just save us that little bit of time. And I'm just gonna put some standard old grease on there. Nothing special. It's just standard wheel bearing grease. Try to catch the grease inside this little rubber, rubbery thing here. And there you go, that's the drive shaft done. Where did that go? There we go. Good, now that's installed. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this. This rod right here is connected with this small connector. It's put in place with 
two of these uh, dowel pins. One goes in here, and one goes in here. Then you slot it on on the gearbox, push in that dowel pin, and then you slot this in here, and then you push in this dowel pin, which locks it in. So it's, and then you put this case over everything to lock the dowel pins in this little retainer. I wish I could have showed you guys this a little bit better, but there's also a uh, rubber o-ring inside of here that's meant to be like a buffer of a sort and you want to grease this up a little bit a lot of grease and I'm using silicone grease just because it's rubber so put it on push the pin in now this is on here and lock this in and put this clips on top of everything to lock them in place and there you go now you can shift why won't that fit? Ah, uh, wait a minute. How stupid can you get? Obviously, it's supposed to go on this way. Ah, oh, would you look at that? Everything fits now that it's in the right way. By the way, this beam right here is from the 960. This is not the 740 beam. Oh. We should put the shifter in there now. Put these plastic inserts in here. And then one of them has a has a uh, has an O-ring on it. Now, to be quite honest, I don't remember which side the O-ring should be on. I'm not really sure it matters, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on the left side, which is probably most likely the wrong side. Now we want to slide this on here. I want to make sure the sprint is in the middle. Okay, so I guess it's got to be a little bit offset. Tighten that up. A little bit. Really, about now, I would like to put, I would like to put this reverse gear stuff on, but I don't really know where that is for the moment. I'm gonna leave that alone, and we're gonna put the drive shaft in here and get that hooked up. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you today. Kind of ran out of time on this one, but uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. Maybe with something else. We'll see. Till next time, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Hurry it, hi.